today I'm going to show you a traditional Japanese New Year's sweet omelette. So stick around. Welcome back to No Recipes. I'm Mark Matsumoto and I'm here to show you how to elevate your everyday meals. So hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out. We don't have Thanksgiving in Japan and Christmas is often celebrated with friends. That leaves New Year's, which is when families get together to celebrate Oshogatsu or the start of the new year. Since Oshogatsu is all about rest and reflection, all of the cooking is done ahead of time and packed into these lacquered wooden boxes called jubako. This is what's known as osechi ryori, and it's filled with symbolic wishes for the new year. One of the most recognizable osechi items is a rolled sweet omelette called datemaki. The rolled omelette looks a bit like a scroll, which is how knowledge used to be passed down in ancient times. And it's said to make the person eating it smarter. Traditionally, date make is made using eggs, fish paste, sugar, and whipped egg whites. But today I'm going to show you an easier method using hanpen, which is a kind of fluffy white fish cake that you can pick up at Japanese markets. This is hanpen, and it's made with white meat fish, mountain yams, and egg whites ground together, which gives it a meringue-like texture. By blending 90 grams of this in with our eggs, it makes them fluffy while giving the datemaki an umami-rich taste from the fish. We're also going to be using 2 tablespoons of mirin, which is a sweet brewed rice wine. I usually don't cook with it because it's so hard to find a real one, but try and find a mirin without any added sugar or salt. Our other ingredients include 5 eggs, 2 tablespoons of sugar, and 1 8 teaspoon of salt. We're also going to need a makisu or bamboo sushi mat and a few rubber bands. The makisu has a ribbed pattern that's going to give the outside of our datemaki its ridges and the stiff bamboo sticks are going to allow us to compress the datemaki using rubber bands. Let's start by soaking the mat in water. This is going to keep the egg from sticking to the mat when we roll it. Next, we're going to tear the hanpen up into small chunks. I'm going to cut the music for a sec so you can hear just how fluffy this is. Just like a marshmallow! Okay, the next thing we want to do is line an 8 inch baking pan with parchment paper. I like to start by folding the paper into a square using the bottom of the pan as a guide. Let's go ahead and test fit this. Perfect! Now let's go ahead and cut slits into the paper towards the folded corners. This is going to allow our paper to sit flush with the sides of the pan without getting all bunched up around the corners. So for a heavy batter like brownies, this would be fine. But the egg is so thin, the caved in sides are gonna be a problem. But hang on, I've got a solution. Staples! Just staple the corners together towards the top so the staples don't come into contact with the eggs. And look at that! This'll do just fine! To make the batter for the datemaki, I'm gonna add the hanpen into a blender and then I'm going to break in 5 eggs. You ideally want to use eggs with a vibrant orange yolk because it's going to give your datemaki a much nicer color. Then you want to add the mirin, sugar, and salt to the blender and attach the lid. Now we're going to blend the mixture until it's nice and smooth. You want it to be free of lumps, but don't get too carried away or you're going to blend the air right out of it. If you don't have a full-sized blender, a stick blender or even a food processor should work. That should be good. Let's go ahead and pour this mixture into our prepared pan. It almost looks like a loose cake batter, doesn't it? Let's get this into the oven. I've preheated my oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 Celsius. 
In my convection oven, it takes about 10 minutes to cook through. But all ovens are a little different, so if your datemaki starts browning too quickly, or it's not browning enough, you may need to turn down or turn up the heat to compensate. The datemaki is done when it's golden brown on top, and a toothpick inserted into the center comes out clean. Be careful not to overcook the egg, or it's gonna end up dry. Okay, this is looking good, so let's get it out of the oven. I'm gonna let this cool for a minute or two, but you need to roll it while it's hot. So use this time to shake off any excess water from your makisu. Now I'm gonna remove the egg from the pan. The paper should be cool enough to touch, but the pan's still gonna be really hot, so be careful. Next, we just wanna remove the staples and peel back the parchment paper. Then you wanna transfer the egg onto the ribbed side of the bamboo mat. Now I'm just gonna use the mat to roll it up. You wanna start off a little slow so the egg doesn't crack, but be sure to roll it tight so there are no gaps between the layers. Once you have it rolled up, double check to make sure it's nice and tight, and then we're gonna secure the roll using rubber bands. This is going to compress our datemaki so the roll holds its shape while imprinting the ribbed pattern of the bamboo onto the surface of the roll. Once the rubber bands are nice and tight, just wrap the whole roll up in plastic wrap and let this chill in the fridge for at least two hours. I usually leave it in there overnight, just to be safe. Make sure you get the end seal off too, otherwise it's gonna end up dry. Okay, now it's time for the big reveal. Let's unwrap the datemaki, remove the rubber bands, and our datemaki is done! Beautiful, isn't it? Let's go ahead and slice this up with a sharp knife. I usually like to cut it into 12 slices, but you can cut them thinner or thicker if you'd like. These golden scrolls of egg are a symbolic part of Osechi Ryori, but the sweet umami-rich omelette reminds me of the egg served at good sushi restaurants, so I'm down for making datemaki any time of the year. Compared to tamagoyaki, datemaki is more robustly seasoned, and with a moist, fluffy texture, I think I may actually like these better. Because of their fun shape and vibrant color, they're also the perfect addition to a bento box lunch. Datemaki is a sweet way to ring in the new year, and it's a must for any box of Osechi, so I hope you'll give it a try. If you enjoyed watching this, I'd really appreciate your support by giving this a thumbs up and by dropping a comment down below. If you have friends that love Japanese culture, send them a link to this video so they can learn about Oshogatsu traditions too. Also, if you aren't already, please consider supporting the making of these videos by becoming a patron on Patreon. All right, I hope you enjoy the rest of your year, and as we say in Japan, yoyo toshio! Check us out on Instagram.